Happy holidays, party people. Woo, woo, woo. Old folks, you're seeing this after the Christmas holiday and uh, possibly in the middle of some other holiday. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we are recording it on the 21st of December, which means we're recording it before the holiday and Ice Apocalypse 2022. Uh, which is uh, which is something that happens in the Pacific Northwest, specifically Portland, where we 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 don't really get snow, we get ice, and a uh, huge storm, which is affecting a lot of the country, is sweeping through our part of it uh, tomorrow, and through Christmas, and uh, in preparation, we've already declared a state of emergency. So if you see this episode. That means we live through it. <laughs> you actually had power to edit the episode. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll see you in January. Yep, that's the plan. <laughs> well, the plan. Uh, conversely, uh, Curtis, where I am, it is 73 degrees and sunny. Wow. Okay. So uh, you enjoy your ice apocalypse. I, I am. Uh... I want none of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I feel like. This leads me very nicely into the next section of our last show of the year. Um, what are you drinking to help you forget today, Dan? To help me forget? Yes. Oh, no, I'm drinking because I enjoy a glass of Guinness, which is oh. uh, halfway gone now because I've been I poured this when we were, you know, before to the start. delay, um, just just so y'all know, there was a delay. Just, in I should have just finished it and then and I got poured a one. brand new one. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's just a Guinness. This is uh, this is a Guinness time of year for me. So that it's a good it's a good beer for the for the winter. It's a very good beer, even if your winter is seventy three degrees and sunny. Yeah, that's right. It's just it's a part of it's a it's just a mindset. Yeah, really, is what it yeah. is. What are you it's drinking? Like, what do you have? It's like a uh, glowing fire in in your throat without the hurt. Yeah, and that didn't go where I wanted to go. Yeah, it's very quite nice. It's not like that at all. What do you have? What, what are you drinking? Jim Parker's Holiday Ale. Okay. <laughs> the Holiday Ale uh, is uh, includes uh, six bad jokes on every uh, on every can. Oh man! And uh, is that to help you get through the beer? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I've never had it. This is called Holiday Ale, a winter warmer. Brewed and canned in Portland, Oregon, and okay. uh, and uh, let's see, are any of these jokes that are actually tellable on stream here? I'm glad you prepared. Well, I read them earlier, and uh, then I forgot because I'm a little frazzled because Ice Apocalypse 2022. <laughs> Uh, it turns out they're actually all in jokes, so let's just give it a pop. All right, and uh, see how we do here. I will be drinking this out of my McMenamin spirit glass, where they okay. have a mummy cat. Yep. And uh, let's see how we do here. Is McMenamin's a local? It is a local producer? chain, and McMenamin's is a hotelery restaurant brewery oh bar wow and what they do is they grab old buildings and it used to be a commune of artists so they refurbish these places and they're all over oregon and southern washington mm, okay. and uh they're good they're good when you finally come up here we'll take you to a couple like there's one near us called uh kennedy school and it's an old elementary school that's now a hotel and event space and restaurant and many bars. They have many bars. <laughs> many bars within the same location. What does it smell oh, like? Oh, that's good. Oh, you like it? All right. Okay, it smells nutty. And uh yeah. And it it's not a typical IPA. It does have a winter feel to it. So much like your Guinness, I'm actually feeling very winter and wonderful. 
It said a winter IPA. I thought it was just said winter ale. So winter ale. It's not, but it doesn't. Even ales up here kind of taste like IPAs. Everything just kind of has a a grounded Pacific Northwest feel to it. What? Dude, you'll just have to come. It's a hard thing to explain. Okay. All, 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 all right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also very nice, and Good. I'm enjoying it, and that will be our thing for today. So, so yes. is Jim Parker, is that just the name of the brewery, or is That's that the, the master brewer of a different... He's the master brewer at uh, Bear Lick Brewing Company. Okay. Yeah. Bear Lick. Yeah, B A E R L I C. Bear Lick. Bear Lick. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, he did good work. I thought they were making a play on words like cowlick. Oh. (laughs) But because you're up there (laughs) where there's bears, there are bears. There are bears. All right. Well, anyway. Anyway, how was your week? Uh, It's been, uh, it's been fine. It's been fine. Uh, uh, had a hard time with motivation again. Yeah, Um, I share that problem. I was I was burnt out this last week, specifically on the hobby front. I actually did a lot of work on the recording and editing of videos for the tube of you channel but <laughs> but because i was doing so much of that i my my hobby time was truncated significantly got it got it uh yeah i mean <laughs> actually it sounds like we're going right into our weekly progress <laughs> I was feeling the same kind of burnout. The week just kind of the end of December has come so fast. Yeah. And it just it just barreled into me like nothing and all of a sudden Renee and I looked at each other we were like it's the 20th. When did that happen? <laughs> when did that happen? And so yeah, I felt really burnt out. Um, Renee mm. is still chugging along through the rest of this week for work and, uh, and she's feeling it. Arlo, our dog is feeling it. Like, it's just, it's, it doesn't even feel like, like the normal holiday time right now. It's just been such a trudge. Yeah. And, and, now, my, and now you've my got hobby the storm. Time, yeah. And that on top of it, it's like, we, we. <laughs> We bought firewood in case the power goes out and we can't use our heat so oh. that we can use our fireplace to keep ourselves warm. Anyway, yeah. point is, this has affected my hobby time as well. Yeah. Um, did you get anything done? I did. Oh, <gasps> I did get some stuff done. This was not a zero week for me. Do you have a slideshow? Um, it's more of a still photo. <gasps> hey, Curtis, are you ready for a still shot? I am so ready for a still <laughs> shot. <laughs> so... Uh, I did not, I don't think, I won't say, no, absolutely, I did not meet the goal that I had set for myself last week, but I think because I, because here's what my goal was, I said last week, I was going to get half of my troops for a kill team done, which would be like Mm -hmm. generally two or three models. I wanted to get them to the same point of completion that my very first test model was at. Right. Right. I didn't get that far, but I got farther with more minis because I started Mm. realizing this is all the same procedure. These these are the Grey Knights. They all have the same uniform. So why am I going to paint one guy? I do it in a batch. It makes sense. That's I mean that every Space Marines painter will tell you to paint them in a batch because you get more done faster. Mm Mm-hmm. So I started doing that. But while I was painting the uh, the pauldrons and whatnot, I uh, decided to do... Well, here, let me just share my screen. Excellent. Oh, wow. Oh, dude, okay. there's so much more paint down here than I expected. So the, the pauldrons and the sabatons on a couple of the guys, I'm going to attempt to do, like, multicolored and some designs on 
on these. Oh, they look rather really cool. than rather than just doing solid red like this guy is back here. This yeah. was this was the very first guy I did, and then he's got solid red. This dude back here. So I'm gonna try this. I mean, it's it's really messy right now because it's kind of hard to paint a f perfectly straight line. Right. Um, but I think as if I get close enough, it'll it'll look pretty good from a distance. Um, so that's that's the idea is to try to do some kind of heraldry on pauldrons and sabatons. Dude, on, I love it. On the the troop dudes, the warriors and the gunners. That's is great. Their official official designation. So. I didn't get as far as I wanted to on a couple guys, but I did get more progress on more guys. So I think uh, that's I, a I think win. It, I think it balances out. And it looks a lot better. I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to say the way it is. It's definitely messy and it needs to be cleaned up, but I can see where it's going. And I think it'll look, I think it'll look pretty good. It, it looks better than I thought it would. I agree, man. To have. I agree. To have them just to break up the monotony of their uniforms. Otherwise, it would just be all silver armor, and you know the the different little decorations on their armor would be the variances. But right. I wanted to. I got a little ambitious and wanted to try something else. So this horizontal line. I'm not really sure if I want to leave it horizontal. If I want to like put ja uh, make it jagged. Mm, mm, um, mm. not sure how I want to do that, or if I want to do like. I don't know, something vertical as well and make it four, a four paneled, <laughs> maybe not on him. Cause he's already, it's going to be right. hard to, it's going to be hard to paint over that red with a lighter color if I decide to do that. So maybe I can, maybe I can go with this guy here. Cause he's not, he's just got the, the tan undercoat right now to prep him for, for his, his heraldry. But anyway, that's what I've got done. That looks great, man. So far. This is really cool. So. You know, I feel like there's, there's gonna be some resource online of uh of uh like gray knight heraldry that you might be able to borrow from or use as inspiration yeah normally this is when i'd say let me send you something but i i actually don't think i have any gray knight stuff i think that's one of the few things that i don't have in the library anymore because mm -hmm. yeah yeah well i will say a couple of nights ago, I finished reading this. Nice. Nice. How'd you like it? I loved it. It awesome. is so good. It it is such a difference. Uh the this is the front line of the battle with chaos. Right? What uh oh, and I don't know if you could see the shield yes 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 on his mm -hmm. on his shoulder so this he says in the book that justicars specifically are allowed to have a shield with their heraldry on their shoulder nice so that's kind of what inspired the thought of doing it on the pauldron for some of just the regular warriors they haven't earned their tilting shield yet, so they get it on their pauldron. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And I've seen some art with other, with like regular troops with some variation on their, mm. on their pauldrons. So where was I going with that? Um, oh, when I read another book that's up there, uh, Double Eagle by Dan Abbott. Yes, yes. Really, really enjoyed. Yes, very much enjoyed Double Eagle as well. What I found so interesting about it, though, was the setting was more of like in peacetime, it would have been a sea, like an, a lakeside resort or a mm -hmm. seaside resort if it was, you know, not an ocean, but it was a little internal sea. And there were piers and there was a restaurant or a cafe or something at the end of a pier that one of the pilots would frequent because there was a woman that he met there that he was starting to get sweet on. Actually, they're getting a little sweet on each other. Spoiler. And, <laughs> and there was that like normal day stuff juxtaposed with the air combat that formed the action of 
the book and of course with the threat of i of the enemy Mm -hmm. traveling south and Mm -hmm. they were going to attack this lakeside area and so you've got that looming threat of these other people there's just a bunch of civilians in this seaside town that got to get the heck out yeah or or they're going to you know be in the middle of a war zone in a second There's none of that in the Grey Knights. <laughs> that, that book, that book is all bad news bears all the time from start to finish. It's just, this is bad stuff and it's getting worse. And wow. it Yeah, no, it just, I mean, it, it went fast. I think I read it in a, I don't even know, a few days, I, you know, in, in my little sessions of reading before I go to bed, but uh, really dug it, really dug it. But anyway, so that is what uh, inspired the change here in, in direction with nice. the painting. That I wanted to, I wanted to do that. Um, and there are little tiny shield I, um, items that I could clip out and attach to the Justicars. Now that I know what that is, right? I didn't, I didn't know what they were before. So now that I do, I might. I might do, add that. I think oh. you should. I think you should. Um, I, I apologize. I got distracted because I was thinking I have a bunch of spare transfers that have like those black swords and stuff. Mm. Do you need more transfers for your heraldry? I don't, I don't know. There were no transfers in the Grey Knights box. Okay. But... There were a bunch of transfers in the Octarius box, but yes. I think those are probably specific. Those to are specific the orcs to and uh, to the Death Core of Creed. Correct. Yeah. So unless there are plain black swords or something like that in their heraldry, I can tell you for a fact there's not because I've I've don't I've know. studied those those transfers pretty pretty hard yeah i'm a big and fan I'm, of the transfers and i'm not sure i want to use transfers though oh okay that's also solid no i'm not saying that i'm uh, that i think that i'm a skilled enough painter that i'm going to try to freehand <laughs> anything like that but i i think i can i think i can do what i'm doing now enough well enough just i mean just a straight line split the colors like that have that be the Hopefully. start. We'll see. We'll Let see the actual happens. symbols come as they start to make a name for themselves. Yeah. 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 Nice. We'll see. Nice. Right, but that's it. That was my that was my weekly progress, which I'm pleased to say was not zero. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. <laughs> definitely, definitely a W in the old wind column, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And it's inspiring too to to see it not look like complete butt. Because <laughs> had I done this and we're like, oh no, that looks bad. I that probably would have put the skids on for another week while I tried to mentally recover from how bad my idea was. But to see it look pretty decent, even in its rough form, and knowing that I can clean it up and make it look even better, that's encouraging. And yeah. that gets me fired up to want to paint more. Nice. So nice. that that might have kicked me out of my uh, my my slump. Hopefully. Well, that's pretty great. Well, awesome, dude. So. That's fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. And they they do look really good. They're looking really good. Yeah. Thank you. How uh, about you? You said you you said you were in a slump. Much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, I actually got the most done in the past week since our last recording. On Monday night, during no games for old men game night than I had mm-hmm. the rest of the week. And I almost got one guy finished. Okay. Almost. Almost. So here is here is the slideshow uh-huh. of disappointment. <laughs> oh no, come on. <laughs> so this is this is Stud. You may remember yep. Stud from right. from last time. Uh-huh. Uh I am nearly gotten him done. He is nearly yeah. done. What I've yep. got to do is I gotta Half of his helmet is uh, is almost finished. I've got to do the other side, get the color right on that. I've got to okay. do highlighting 
on all of the armor above the waist. Okay. Um, but other than that, oh, and I've got to get his rank stripes uh, completed too. But other than that, oh, is that what those are? Yeah, he get well. I, I use thought... them as rank stripes. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, what uh, rank is stud? He's a private, so he gets only one red, and you'll see that in the demonstration. So I got gotcha. you. We get uh, here's the side. You can see I like I got I got quite a bit done. Yeah, I got quite a bit done. There's a yeah. lot of highlight. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, there is this weird imperfection on his back back here, and that... I'm trying to find a way to work it into the model, like. Is that it a wasn't... manufacturing imperfection, or is that supposed to be damage? It to... was. Uh, it was a paint issue that I didn't fix right away. Oh, okay. but now that it's dried and I see it, I kind of I've actually highlighted it to make it more imperfect. It was mm -hmm. not this obvious before. But I think I want to put something on his back and make it look like he's had somebody tried to get him. From behind, yeah, yeah. somebody, uh, but he still log into his back, but he totally he made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the fact that he's still standing means that that person isn't, or thing, <laughs> or heretic, right? But yeah, everything else is is coming along. Everything else is good. All the yeah. reds are highlighted and finished. This is what he should look like. <laughs> this is this is casual. Uh, casual is the Bill Paxton of my squad. Okay. And uh, he's also the one that you mercilessly murdered during our uh, during our battle. I mean, he probably shot first. He didn't get a chance to. Um, um, that's how I just, remember He it. just viciously died. Viciously. Um, um, I mean, he's not an orc. And, yeah. And my guys were, so. Yeah. You know, he, he got what was coming. All the privates have just white, and it's actually just a really pale gray, but it's effectively white on their sides. Uh, sergeants have this one red, and then lieutenants have the first two red. Captains would have three, and then anybody higher than that would have all four. Um, but anybody higher than that? Yeah, but captain, nobody... nobody like a major... Yeah, like a but... captain probably wouldn't wear this armor. Uh, a colonel wouldn't, a general wouldn't, like they they would be in different kind of suits. Oh, okay, all right. So it's just right. it's just front line. That's your narrative, or is that? That's my narrative. That's okay. Yeah, uh, but you could see this is, it's actually the same model, like mm -hmm. the same uh, components that make stud, which is why I chose to use him as the base. Mm -hmm. And then I also got some work done on Lieutenant Duruth. But okay. you can see he's still he's still pretty sloppy. There's still lots of work to do here. Yeah. Yeah. I got everything like all of his belt down is done except for the grenades. Okay. And uh yeah. So I usually I have a really weird process. I start by getting all the base colors done and then like especially for troops, I'll do like a big body wash and just do everything in in uh uh null and oil just to get just okay. just to slap it out and then i'll start at the feet and work my way up so huh. okay yeah it's just it, it's a it's a weird thing it's it's how it's how i've got things done uh yeah. and so well he's I mean, got a helmet hanging off the back of his uh belt. oh look at that yeah and then i this is a concussion gun for necromunda but I think it just looks like the most badass plasma gun you could get. <laughs> so yeah. I use it as a plasma gun. Yeah. That works. And then, yeah, and if you paint the that center portion that there, mm -hmm. you know, paint that blue, then yep. yeah, then there's no question that that's plasma. Yeah. Yeah, I did that for uh for the regular plasma gunner trooper, which I don't have a picture of. But uh uh, but yeah, so yeah, so he's, he's, he's got a plasma pistol and then these are just, these are just the dismal untouched, the very, the very characters I mentioned in my goals last week. Yeah. They are incomplete, merely black primed. There's nothing going on here. 
just a whole but look there's the uh there's the the what would be the ogren uh uh big like smarten and uh he's he's just bribered black lots of pouches very jim liefeld uh here's another one again prime black none of their shields are glued in either i just didn't take them off uh for these pictures but yeah and so there we go there we go. I think you're being too hard on yourself. Well, you know, I've done remember so what well you for said so last long. week. Do you remember what? Yeah, well, yeah, but you did. You you pounded out an entire kill team in three weeks. Or actually, it wasn't three weeks. When was that? Six yeah, weeks. Just about. Well, okay. It felt like three weeks. <laughs> but still, I mean, you made a butt ton of progress in a very short period of time. And. You've earned a, a little bit of a reprieve. That's fair. But even then, like what you told me last week, any progress is a win. So any progress is a win. You didn't I'm feeling. You didn't do absolutely zero. I'm so excited to get him done because yeah. he's he's the last one that I would use for uh uh for like a regular 40k game. Your game because with... he fills in. Yeah, yeah. And everybody else would just be bonus right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody else would just be bonus right See? now. Yeah. See, look, that's that's already ahead of the game there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm feeling on, good. Got to get my transfers on. Got to get everything going. Yeah, got to. Too hard. But yeah, so. so that was it. Uh, look, this is the last show of the year. Do you want to set goals for our January show of 2023? Um, I think starting in January. When, okay, so what week would that be? Are we recording? The fourth or the third? Wait, are we not recording on the 28th? Technically the 28th. We're December recording 28th? the 28th, but it's our January show. It's our first January show. So it's for, it's for January 3rd. Well, wait, that, how does that help me? <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to help you. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna have like two weeks off or something, and I could actually oh God, no. get some good no, no, progress no. going. This is this is this is television. Okay, we gotta produce every week. Yeah, I, I hear you. I I think I think the the three guys that I've got on screen there. I don't see anything on screen. Oh right, they're on my screen. <laughs> My photo. The one that I showed in my, my, my progress report. Yes. I think I can get those three guys to a to to a table ready position. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So we're gonna And get... as a stretch goal. Yes. Good plan. That two thousand one Tau box set. Knock that puppy out. <laughs> I feel like you may be setting up the beginning of your year pretty rough right now. A little ambitious. Okay. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so, ideally, you're going to be able to finish the uh, the three people that we saw in the image earlier. Yeah. And uh, stretch goal, complete the Tau Army box set. <laughs> um, I would like to get the rest of the main kill squad kill team up to the point where i've got the, the previous three that you saw great great yeah. okay cool uh i i am gonna stick with my drag them along with me my goal for last week because uh they're gonna be the last thing that i'm gonna be able to paint for myself before i do the dark elves for uh for commission so yeah, yeah. okay yeah so those are coming after the holiday so they are uh, in okay. fact in fact if you're we are recording this on the 21st if you are paying attention to the instagrams um the uh person who is is uh uh commissioning these models to get made uh i don't want to just call them out because that's that's rude but you're going to see it in the stories uh okay he actually posted an image of him building the dark elves today and uh tagged us in the post and so oh how yeah. do I see that? Uh, on the Instagrams. <laughs> oh, you reposted it? Uh, I haven't yet because it happened right before we sat down to record, okay. but it will right. be in our stories uh, after we're done. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. I will look. I'll keep an eye out for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's pretty neat. Nice. Pretty neat. 
Neat to see square bases again. It's been a while. Exciting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's our weekly update. So before we dip too deep into uh, our next segment, uh, I actually wanted to toss out a bit of trivia that I don't know if I told you before, but Double Eagle by Dan Abnett was Uh the thing that inspired me to buy a Thunderhawk, not a Thunderhawk, a Thunderbolt uh, fighter when I visited Warhammer World back in 2004. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, there is still a Thunderbolt sitting right over there in Eyeline, waiting to be built. (laughs) Why isn't it on camera? Because Forge World Resin scares the hell out of me. Mm. I have already pre-washed all of the uh all the parts i have put them all in fun little bags i've got like a painting plan i know exactly the uh the pilot his name is deck taro his call sign is charlatan uh it's uh he is part of the red wing squadron and uh (laughs) i named him when i was younger but it's still got a good story so i'm just sticking with it and uh and i even bought one of the new flight bases for uh-huh. it uh-huh. but uh i am terrified to build a forge world model so Why? i haven't done it yet are they cuz they're like difficult? notoriously complicated really yeah and i don't okay. even have any warping or anything on these parts like they came out really clean it's a good cast i've pre-cleaned them i've already got all the gates off i've kind of gotten everything kind of worked out and cut down um, but yeah, like double Eagle sits in my brain mm-hmm. cause it was, it was a really good book. And if you yep. haven't read or listened to double Eagle, like Dan Abnett does really good science fiction regardless, but he really, he really has laid out so much of the foundation of what people understand as the world of 40 K now. And, uh, it's, it's a really solid, really solid book. Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. All that to say, it's time for other tabletop things. No games for so Dan, since this is a 2022 year end wrap up, yes, which will be the title, so that we get all the algorithm hits. <laughs> uh-huh. As opposed to just talking about a single topic this week, uh-huh. I thought it be I thought it would be nice for us to revisit our three favorite tabletop things from 2022 regardless of what they are okay would you like me to start or would you like to start am i going to say one and you're going to say one and i'm going to say one and you're going to say one or am i going to say all three can, of mine all at once i think because you and i play uh kill team that's the right way to go so okay. let's start with number three <laughs> okay my Yes. Okay. So my number three tabletop related favorite thing of 2022 was discovering Geeky Tees and Games, the That's store. Awesome. That's awesome. It is such a neat space and the staff is so friendly and their stock is, it just seems so like I could, I, I just like being in that place. It's a really neat store. I, I'm, I'm so happy that I found it. Uh, the times and, and that, that we got to play to there. It. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The uh, it reminds me a lot of the game stores that we have up here, with the exception of them not having beer on tap. Yeah, what's that all about? Uh, it's just a thing in Portland. Everything has beer on tap. No, no, no. I, why doesn't? Why isn't it geeky beers in games? Is because, what I'm saying. Because it's not in Portland. <laughs> Well, d- d- dog we, got it. We used to have a uh, a bathing suit store near our place. Uh, well, they still exist. They just moved, um, and they have beer on tap there, so you can go what? shopping for a bathing suit and get How a. How long does it take people to shop for bathing suits in Portland that they have beer on tap? Sometimes you just want to have a Is beer while you're going shopping. Bar and bikinis. Mm-hmm. That sounds pretty great, actually. It's pretty great. But not to distract. That's my bad. Um, my number three for 2022 was the Into the Dark release for Kill Team. 
Oh, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Because it is my favorite game to play right now. And it had the uh, Navis, uh, Navis infantry, the Navy, Navy breachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's just. Which you like those models, right? It's just the design that I've enjoyed for so, that I've wanted to see for so long and to Mm -hmm. finally have them. Games Workshop just released their like, not like, they just released their model of the year poll for, for 2022. Yeah. And the winner is probably going to be the Avatar of Cain for the Eldar. But I voted for the Into the Dark release for both the scenery, which is really, really great. Okay. And also the uh, and also the, the Navy Breachers. And mm-hmm. the Crute are really good, too. But I'm particularly drawn to those things that I loved ever since the first time I saw them. So, okay. Yeah. Nice. Number two. <laughs> okay, so my number two favorite tabletop related thing of last year of of 2022 <laughs> was actually getting to play tabletop games on a fairly regular basis. I own a lot of tabletop games because mm-hmm. I was a big fan of Will Wheaton's tabletop on Geek and Sundry. That was a good show. Love really that, that show. show a lot. And that show inspired many of my tabletop game purchases. But I don't really have a whole anybody to play with. So they they were just kind of things that sat in my shelf. However, this year when we started venturing out more after we had been vaccinated and boosted and whatnot, and our favorite pub started opening up for regular business hours, me and my wife and our friend John would go to this place on Sundays at lunch, and we would stay several hours and play a tabletop game. Either I or John would bring one of ours and we would just sit at this place has uh they converted there was a parking lot in the back. Uh, and okay. during COVID, they converted that parking lot into an outdoor beer garden. Oh, I remember when we were they, there. Yeah. They actually built a second bar in the back that is open like Friday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, whatever their busiest nights are. Right. And to help take some of the heat off of the the inside bar but there are more than a dozen i think like picnic style tables and then a bunch of little round tables that you can fit two or three people around yeah and it's just become this really great inviting space there's there's plants all over the place they've got those you know rolling heaters that they can fire up in the winter time when it gets cold but it's just become this really, it's my favorite place to be other than home. <laughs> so uh, it, I mean that legitimately. I'm not being facetious at all. I mean, it's why we go there every week. Right. But we've played King of Tokyo. We have played Forbidden Island, uh, Castle Panic. Oh, Castle Panic's good. Uh, all three of those by the, oh, uh, Red Dragon Inn. Those first three, by the way, all from Will Wheaton's tabletop show. <laughs> uh, and then one that my wife got me for either my birthday or Christmas last year that was uh, kind of, she just went on her own and said, I, I think this would be a, we call it our rogue gifts. We usually try to like, okay, what do you want? So we like make a list and then, but then, right. then, it, but then every now and then, you know, inspiration will strike us. We go, we go rogue and get, get something. Anyway, this was her rogue gift. It's a board game called Tokaido. <gasps> yes. It is, it is, first of all, it's beautiful. The artwork is gorgeous. And the entire point of the game is you try, it might've been on, well, on tabletop. I don't know. I think that's anyway, how I learned I think, about it. I think it yeah. may have been. Yeah. Um, but the whole point is that you are traveling across Japan on foot in, you know, during the feudal period and your 
your journey, you're trying to have the most culturally fulfilling journey. So the things that you'll do at the various stops is, is you will either paint a landscape or you might meet a fellow traveler who will either tell you a story or, mm -hmm. or you, or you might, uh, you might find an inn, a roadside inn that is serving an unusual dish that you can eat. And the more the variety of things that you do and the more like landscapes that you complete painting of, because each time you stop at one, you can't complete the whole landscape. You can do just a portion of it. Right, right. But uh, if you stop at those particular locations enough, you can complete the entire landscape and that earns you points. But anyway, just so, so by the time you get to your end point and the and you add up all of these experiences that you've had, it's just... I just, it's just a really enjoyable game. I mean, it's competitive yeah. in that you could potentially, let's say I've got one panel left on my painting, but you know that I'll earn a lot of points for doing it. And so you, you go next, you could land on that last painting spot and block me from it. Right. So, <laughs> you know, and deny me. But, you know, so it's competitive in that way, but it's there's nothing cutthroat about it. It doesn't feel like it that way. It's just it's such a calm game and an enjoyable game. And we had we had just returned like the previous year from our trip to Japan, the three of us, when we went. And it was just like just this love of the country is still in us. Yeah. To the point where we i think we we are we have issued our next planned trip and we're just going to go back to japan dude so, i'm with you on that yeah yeah i am also a big fan so play yeah getting getting to play actually play tabletop games which is something that never really got to do that much of uh in in the last 10 years or so Number number two of 2022 for me. Nice. Uh, my number two, not quite as sentimental, a uh, little bit of uh, excitement for what's coming, mm -hmm. is the proposed VTT for D&D &D 1. Oh, okay. Or 1 d and I don't know which way it goes, actually. But the we've posted the link to what they're proposing before and i will add it again to the link below <clears throat> but the fact that it looks like what our tables used to look like especially when we were completely invested in dwarven forge <laughs> yeah and old school like reaper models it i think the possibility of that is very very exciting it is mm -hmm. It, the the idea of it is really really great now yeah. this is tempered by the fact that i'm worried that they're going to uh they're going to nickel and dime us with microtransactions left and yep. right yep uh in fact if you pay attention to the no games for old men instagram feed you may have seen me reshare a story where uh somebody else talked about uh it was a stick figure that said wizards of the coast and it said mm. hey We've got D D one, which is all these things and microtransactions, and then the other side was stick figures playing D and D, and they went, "That's great!" And then they <laughs> moved apart, and they kept playing D and D. And I feel like that's where we're probably going to end up yeah. at. But yeah. Yeah. if D and D one really is reasonable, and everything everything works the way they say it will, mm -hmm. I think that virtual tabletop would be a great way for us to be able to uh, carry on our D&D &D adventures just because it would be so much like what we used to do in person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's, uh, it's an exciting step forward. It might remains to be seen if it is a misstep, but right. Right. But anytime a company makes a choice like that and we see how the market reacts, then other companies then can react accordingly. So if it turns out that gamers are willing to nickel and dime, accept the nickel and diming, 
You, know, you poor then, video gamers have been doing it for for almost a decade now. I, for real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, with microtransactions, all the microtransactions came in and just and... it it's it's made uh, EA EA games a uh, oh, a pariah. God. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. So I I'm mean, gonna put one down for that. You see, you see what the market does. I mean, uh, it's gonna it's, it's, gonna, you it's know horse what? armor. It's gonna be horse armor. Yep. Yep. We're. If, this is such a weird and wonderful time to be alive. We are well, seeing such dramatic changes. Yeah. And anyway, I don't want to get too far off course because it's time for number one. <laughs> What's your number one uh, favorite tabletop thing from 2022, Dan? Buying the Octarius set, painting up those orc commandos which i still feel need work i don't i don't i don't feel like i'm done with them i want to do more i want to do you more can. with them yeah and and actually playing a game of kill team dan having you, you come down when you were when is? you were in town and, and actually playing my number one is the same thing yeah yeah Cheers. is actually getting a chance to hang out with my buddy dan who i haven't mm. seen in years and get yeah. a chance to actually be across the table. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot of fun. It was a neat experience. It it gave birth to this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because the idea was, oh, let's just let's just record ourselves in our weekly progress of uh, painting and putting together, and then we'll take pictures during the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and here we are doing it again. We've got of. lessons, and we learned <laughs> lessons from last time. You yeah. know, it's going to be better this time. It will. Yeah. It oh, will. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm yeah. really excited that we had the same number one. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. That's pretty cool. That was yeah. not planned, everybody. It truly <laughs> wasn't expected. It truly wasn't expected. So tell us down uh, in the comments, what are some of your favorite things that happened in the world of tabletop games in 2022? Mm-hmm. Did you discover something new? Did you like find a new way to play something that you're already really excited about what board games were you excited about it's we barely touch on that stuff you know and so yeah tell us about tell us about things that got you excited in 2022 we want to continue these conversations they've been pretty great the last few episodes i guess that was uh our other tabletop things hey uh dan yeah it's the end of the year uh-huh. and uh it's our last show for 2022 yep i think it's time that we talked about what we're hyped about no games for old but this is specifically looking forward this is looking forward right this is looking in to 2023 what are we excited what are we excited about that's coming next year I, I don't get. I can't talk about Willow. You can't. No, that's already out. No, no. Do you want to hear what I'm excited about and then see if it inspires something for you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the thing I'm actually most hyped about is our next game. Mm. That is the thing that I am most hyped about. Okay. But I have a bonus again this week, and I worry that we're setting a precedent in having bonuses for what we're hyped about. Yeah, we got to be careful about that. But I think this is important, and it may flow into what you're thinking. I'm not sure if you as an audience member have paid attention, but it turns out MechWarrior 5 is very popular on this channel. (laughs) Yeah. Very popular. (laughs) Turns out... By far the most watched... Just thing here at No Games for Old Men. An underserved audience in one way, <laughs> shape, or form, because they people are ready to watch the Mech Warrior 5. Yeah. Turns out that video game is based on a tabletop game called That's right. Battletech. That's right. And uh Battletech has an addition that's currently running right now, put out by Catalyst Games, which is owned by Tops. And, uh, is it really? Yeah. Tops. 
Yeah. The trading the card baseball people. card company. Wow. Okay. And it's not hard to get into. It's, there's not a high barrier to entry on this cost-wise. And so we've been thinking, maybe, do we want to invest in a little battle tech? <laughs> oh, God. Do we want to do a little battle tech? Oh, God. And I've been watching other videos on the YouTubes uh-huh. uh, about people who play Battletech. And um, it is a crunchy game, for sure. It is a crunchy yes. game. But I watched a playthrough, and it does have a flow. It does have a flow. And almost everything is 2D6s. Oh, wow. So I'm kind the of The whole game runs on D6. Mm-hmm. Wow. But everything is almost 2D6s. Mm-hmm. Lots of modifiers. You're doing math. You need a cheat sheet. <laughs> but... It's got to flow. So the possibility of us picking up Battletech and adding that to the, the, uh, God, what is that? I don't know. Adding it to the menu here. Repertoire? That's what I was trying to say. And I forgot the word because it turns out Holiday (laughs) Ale is a higher percentage than I was. It is, it is high. Yeah, it's 8.5%. Okay. And uh, I haven't had lunch yet. Not quite at the old Rasputin level, but. No, but it's, it's but doing if you its haven't job. Eaten, if you haven't eaten and it is 4.30, yeah. you are well yeah. past, well past the time you should have eaten something. Well, it turns out prepping for Ice Again 2022. Uh, took up a lot more time than we expected. If by the time you're seeing this, you haven't prepared for ice again, and it's too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's nothing in the store. We'll send Arlo out to find you later. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. It's it's uh, it was it was a real mess. But anyway, so yeah, so that's that's what I'm hyped about. That's cool. Uh, how about how about you, sir? I the the thing I'm hyped about was just announced just this past week. Okay. And that is the answer to two questions that I had in the last couple of months. Why isn't he doing The Witcher anymore? Why is he need Superman anymore? And that is Henry Cavill's Warhammer series, maybe series, Warhammer project with Amazon Studios. That's that, solid, dude. That is exciting. And did you read his his like press release about it? I where can't he said escape it. That he's yeah. been he's been a fan of Warhammer for thirty years, and after twenty two years working in Hollywood, he thinks he's got what it takes now in terms of the 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 creative management side to take this thing that he's loved participating in. Because it was just re- he just revealed within the last year that he's like super into Warhammer. He's a custodies player, like hardcore. And he has brought it to the masses. If one person can be credited for mainstreaming Warhammer in general, it's Henry Cavill. Within the last year, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was a thing that was bubbling to the surface a little bit. Over the last, like especially around 2020, when when pandemic really hit and lockdowns yeah. were happening, yeah. But but like Henry Cavill made it so that people actually say Warhammer. The average person can hear 40k and be like, I think I've heard of that. What is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, I'm excited. That to, I'm one. excited to see where that goes. I don't think we'll actually see the show, whatever it turns out to be, next year. No way. But no way. We, we will definitely get news. It is a we weird... We will okay. see what's happening. I think next year will be development and production, and then yeah. 2024 we'll probably see the fruits Maybe. of the labor. Maybe. It's but, Amazon's... Okay, this is important for everybody else who's watching. Um, so Dan and I are in the industry. Admittedly, I am far away from it now. Being in Portland is a totally different 
uh, market. But Dan and I have been in the industry for a very, very long time. And it would be easy for us to get into the weeds on what it means to actually be in development and putting this project together. Mm. One of the exciting <laughs> things for me about this, like strictly business speaking, is the fact that Amazon is partnered with, you know, that, okay. So yes, Henry Cavill will be EPing on this and starring <laughs> in it. We know that that's part of his deal. That's laid out. That's in the Amazon press release. That's in his press release. That's in the Vertigo press release. Um, EP means executive producer. Thank you. Amazon being the backer on this gives me a lot of hope because they are willing to spend the money. They're willing to spend the money. We saw what they did with the Wheel of Time, which was disappointing for me. I don't oh, think it really? was a bad production. I didn't care for it very much. Really? Um, yeah, but I also don't have the same attachment to the Wheel of Time story like you and Jeff do. I don't have any attachment to it at all. I've never read it. Oh, I thought you did. No. Was it Scott and Jeff? Scott and Jeff, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I always thought that was you. No. But you and I are, are uh, Brandon Sanderson then, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I enjoy okay. Sanderson. Okay. But, yeah, no, I've never read a Wheel of Time book. And okay. so I've got – I watched it from a completely novice, rookie, noob perspective and really enjoyed it. I, okay. What, what, okay. What – as you in the same position, what disappointed you about it? Uh, nothing about the production. Um, I had I had story problems with it because I've just seen the characters seem too old to be making the mistakes that they were making, and I know that they aged up the characters, so that was a personal bias on me. Mm. And uh, uh, it felt like they were trying to squeeze too much in too fast when those Robert Jordan books really breathe, like you really get a chance to hang out with those characters and really see that development go. I felt like they were trying to cram too much in too fast. And mm -hmm. so it made it feel like, like the characters weren't uh, organically getting to the places they needed to get to for what was happening. Um, okay. But, I didn't but again, this is, problems. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to yuck anybody's yum because that was, it is 100% a personal preference on my, my part where I had expectations on the series and it didn't meet those expectations. How could it like, you know what I mean? Like it just, it's not the show's fault that I didn't like it. I just didn't like it, but I love the boys. I love what they do with the boys and they certainly spend mm -hmm. a lot of money on the boys. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched the Lord of the Rings series. And I've heard mixed uh, mixed <sighs> reviews on that. Have you so, really? Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. But I don't... I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. I really okay. enjoyed it. So, I don't know. I don't know who's... I really I enjoyed mixed Willow. reviews you're, you're listening well, to. Well, but... the internet is a place full of hateful people. So... Yeah, so why are you listening to them? Listen to your I... friends who have similar tastes as you... That also includes Ex people who have mixed opinions. Except obvious, except obviously the wheel of time, because yes. I like it. And you I have I have one person that I really trust who loved House of the Dragon and hated uh, the new Lord of the Rings series. And I have watched a few episodes of House of the Dragon, and I was like, all right, well, this is this is serving the uh, more in line with what I I liked of Game of hmm. Thrones. But not didn't encourage me enough to finish it. it but it I'm me... also the person who likes Willow, and apparently that's a very uh, uh, niche thing to what... want to enjoy. But... Yeah, like what does it have? Like a twenty percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something? It's just people got... are really upset about Willow, and Jeez. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So you know, okay. I'd, right. yeah, for what it's All worth. Right. For what it's worth. So I'm excited about the All amount of that. money that they're willing to put behind it. Uh, his, uh, you know, the senior executive producer and, like, creative over at Vertigo Productions is Henry Cavill's partner. So it's going to be a family affair getting that together. Oh. Yeah. Nat I think her name is Natalie. I could look this up. I... I have the internet. N Natalie v something. Starts with oh, v. I literally have IMDb open too because I had to use my uh, 
I, okay. IMDb earlier. So they are. Oh, that's cool. So that yeah, they they can you know while they're cooking dinner. Okay, so prediction time then. Yeah, is, Natalie Viscuso. Prediction time. Yes. Is Henry Cavill going to be in the series? Yes, I think, we I know think that. Yes, That's I part think, of his deal. Yes, obviously. Oh, okay. Because yeah. what what I read, he it just said executive producer, executive like, producing and starring. That's that's oh, always how it's listed. Great. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Yeah. I missed that part. Then, uh, who's he going to be? Is he going to be an inquisitor? Is he going to be a? Is he going to be? Is is it the Horus Heresy? Is he going to? Is it going to be the Horus Heresy series? And he's going to be either Horus or is he the Emperor or is he going to be Lehman Russ? Or you know, I mean, who who's the, he going to be? Or is he going to be just some grunt? Uh, he's a frontline Imperial, guardsman who Imperial dies guard in the first ten minutes. Imperial guard <laughs> sergeant who just happens to be one of those lucky few who happens to live through all the battles that he fights. Right. Or are they going to prosthetic him up and he's going to be Gazkol? Oh my God. That'd Orc. be amazing. Uh, well, would you like, we have some clues. Okay. Clue number one, the uh, logo that they use in the press release and mm-hmm. all of the social media that went along with that announcement is actually a modification of something that was used for the Horus Heresy. Okay. Okay. However, Warhammer community, when they posted their notification about it, they made reference to Henry Cavill being the ultimate ultramarine. Which has been pointed out. Okay. There was a series... And because he was Superman, we already know he looks good in blue. Right, 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 right. Uh, there was a series for Dan Abnett's Inquisitor, or, uh, Inquisitor Eisenhorn, yeah. that was in development. Now, all the people that I know who were kind of in the loop about that project say that it died. But it could be revived at Amazon with Henry Cavill playing Gregor Eisenhorn. Right. Okay. So I don't, I honestly, I just don't think there's enough information to any, for anybody to make any kind of reasonable guess. And Lord knows. That's what predictions oh, are, Curtis. Um, I just... get it. I get it. But like, it is interesting to see every 40K fanboy's idea of what Henry Cavill should do. So I would just like to put out there that uh, Henry Cavill will play Captain Paxis from the Emerald Legion Space Marine chapter <laughs> uh, in a story that I wrote yes. uh, about uh, about my Space Marines. Yeah. So, how many how many copies of that have you sent to him thus far uh, trying to get six. his attention? Only six. Only six. Yeah. And, and they've all, all been returned them, to sender. Not yet, because not yet. You four just... of them were emails and uh, okay. only two of them were sent uh, as physical mail. So, ha ha to you, Dan. <laughs> Well, good luck to you, Curtis. I, I you. certainly, I certainly hope that Henry gets bored over the holiday, decides you know to open, the thing is? decides to like, open that mysterious Manila envelope, reads all about Captain Paxis, and falls in love with the character. And he wants actually, you... he actually couldn't play Captain Paxis because Captain Paxis is a person of color, and uh, it would be whitewashing to have uh, have Henry Cavill play him. So he'll have to play somebody else. Okay. Yeah. You don't have any other people in the. It's just a, it's just him. Lieutenant Rick Morian is uh, is a pretty good choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's got a storm bolter. All right. A power sword. All right. So so get get Idris Elba on the phone. Yeah. And ask if he's interested in being Pax. Dude, Idris Elba is Captain Pax. Oh my god. Okay. So well, when we reach a thousand subscribers. On... There's a series called Gangs of London mm. that my wife and I just watched the first episode of a week or two ago. That's a good show. There's a couple of guys on that show that could that could be a Paxis as well. Yeah, They're that's a good really show. Really good, really good actors. 
So uh, yeah, you got you've got options. You got options. When we get to a thousand subscribers and we actually start the No Games for Old Men Patreon, um, I think one of the tiers is going to be you will have access to the lore of uh, of the different of the different armies that we've created over the years. <laughs> Wait, we. <laughs> well, I know I've I mean, got I have mine. to write lore for my my orc war band. Don't you have it somewhere? Didn't you ever no. come up with anything? No, I, I, no. Got backstories like for D and D characters. No. You don't have no. chapters and chapters and chapters of story uh, written for these people. I mean, I've got D and D adventure journals. That's, oh my god, we should scan those. Those are private. I, <laughs> those don't go out on the internet. Well, they'd be for paying subscribers. If someone's going to pay ten thousand a month as a subscriber, I'll, I I will release. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> the top tier of No Games for Old Men Patreon gets access to Dan's character journals. Yep. Yep. So there Min- we go. Minimum minimum one hundred people have to subscribe at that level before I will even consider releasing. Look, Dan, those are OnlyFans numbers. Awful. I don't know that I'm ready to take pictures of my feet for that just yet. So yeah. Swallow it. Swallow it. All right. Well, that's a pretty good thing to be hyped about, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited. I yeah. I was... I mean, first, first, last month, we hear, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the Witcher anymore. And then last week, yeah, I guess I'm not Superman anymore. And we're like, dude, this guy's just been, like, he had his legs taken out from him. And well, then this week he's like, "Oh, but I'm doing this now." And we're like, oh, yeah. "Okay, perfect because you love that." Sure, of course you can do that. He loves The Witcher too. I mean, he's a huge Witcher fan. Did you fan. hear why I he stepped away? The first two seasons of The Witcher and really yeah. really enjoy them. I know everybody I mean <laughs> because like you said, the internet is a place of hateful hateful hateful, hateful people who just can't figure out how to enjoy something. And I you know, that's what I'm concerned about, actually, because I know that he is a big fan of The Witcher. He's read all the novels. He, like, took the books to set with him. It's why and he stepped while away. Filming, he, he flipped through the books. He was like, oh, on page this and this on in this scene, this happens. So we should film that. And uh, OK, so you keep trying to talk. Go ahead. Well, you're bringing you up the same say? point. Part of the reason why he left was because he felt like the writing team and the producers weren't taking the source material seriously. And they were trying to steer away from it. Yeah. And he was like, look, what you want to do is, and admittedly, this is alleged. This is not directly from oh, him. Oh, really? But these are okay. the stories well, why that are Why are you saying along. it? Why are you saying because, it? Then? Because it's, it's... You're just fueling, uh, you're, you're fanning the flames then that of all the the people who can't figure out how to like anything said about the show. Oh, it's not exactly like the book. Oh, no, no, no. Not so the first what? two Just seasons. Enjoy it's it. it's enjoy the what third. It, is. it was the third season where he was like, look, you're going against what we've established. You're doing things that are against like the character and the source material now. And they were like, well, it's fine. We want to put in this love story and we're going to add like a fluffy poop monster. And, you know, like but apparently he, he was getting in conflict with uh, with the uh, creative team about the direction the show was going. So like a band member who didn't like that they were doing funk jazz instead of <sighs> jazz funk. Man, that's a shame. He stepped away. That's a shame. Yeah, I guess, you know, before it before it blew up and became a big thing, before he decides to just grit his teeth and produce two seasons of a show that he's not happy with. And now he's got that on his resume. Like Henry oh, yeah, Cavill. I, yeah. I, I get it. He's got so much weight on his shoulders. He's it. been part of so many franchises where fandom either loves it to the point of fanaticism. Oh like, God. Or, yeah they they will repel him like it, yeah. it it's always been so binary for him right. he's never been in anything that's just kind of been like yeah it's good it's yeah. fine 
You know, yeah. it's it's always been it's it's <laughs> always very very polarized. Very Man of Steel was divided down the middle of people who absolutely loved this new take and people who hated it because of what happens at the end. Well, and even if we look at like, his early career, even Enola Holmes, Enola Holmes, which I think is a great, I've never like, seen that family adventure movie he plays sherlock right he does and i think he does a really good job in it but like again polarized there is it is not (laughs) there's no easy thing for henry cavill i don't know i think he was universally appreciated in uh mission impossible for his double his arms his double arm (laughs) reload (laughs) (laughs) but the movie itself wasn't what he got memefied, but that that uh, that movie was not universally beloved. Are you kidding me? That's one of the best. That's one of the best ones, in my opinion. Oh, I didn't even. I see loved it. that one. Yeah, I mean, but you know, again, we're of a certain vintage. We like things <laughs> other people don't like. So you know, the Man from Uncle. That was another one that was that had a huge oh, disparity I've never, to I've it. I've never seen that. The Tudors. That was pretty niche, um, but like. Yeah, no, he he's his whole career has been spent being like, God, they either love me or they they really really hate me. It's he's so he's kind of. I mean, honestly, honestly, with that kind of record, he's mm-hmm. the perfect person to help bring 40k into the world because yeah, that's been yeah. 40k for the last 25. Because he's because he's gonna say, you know what, this is what I'm doing. If you don't like it, yeah. uh, expletive deleted. I yeah. Yeah, he is doing for Warhammer what I think Vin Diesel and Joe Manganiello did for Dungeons and Dragons when the two of yeah. them came out and popularly said, "I play D and D." All of a sudden, we got Critical and, Role, and suddenly you've got you know Vin Diesel, who's like you know the star of the fi- the Fast and Furious franchise, and Joe Manganiello, who uh, has sexy werewolf. 45 abs and yeah star of teen what teen wolf is that what he was on no no what was he, he was on? on he was on true blood oh that's what it, i knew it was a there's wolves involved some anyhow <laughs> whatever he was are you <laughs> sure it wasn't teen wolf i'm positive i mean he might have been on teen wolf i don't think so but he he made his name in in uh... yeah that's not what I, that's not what i that's okay. I'm he was gonna, a werewolf on True Blood. I'm not going to look it up, but what? Uh, okay, fine. So, but anyway, you got you get that, and then like all the all the guys are like, oh, so Sophia Vergara can uh, uh, you know love get down <laughs> can, can can love a guy who plays D and D. Then now there's there's a chance for me. Well, and don't so forget. they're doing. They did that for D and D. Now Cavill's Wait. doing it for Warhammer. We said we said Joe Mangiello's name, and Renee came into my office and was like, I'm sorry, what? Oh my gosh! I heard werewolf on True Blood. Oh, werewolf on True Blood. Yeah, no, Renee. Renee heard werewolf on True Blood, and she was like, "I'm ready. What's up? <laughs> I'm gonna be on this show." Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Cameo. So yeah, uh, he is also in the Untitled Dungeons and Dragons documentary that's coming out in 2024. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, he was not. He was not in uh, Teen Wolf. He was just in True Blood. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. But he is a werewolf. Anyway, point is, point, you're right. Point being, he's doing the thing. That's what Henry Cavill is doing for Warhammer now. I mean, he stood up to Graham Norton when Graham Norton yes, he made did. fun of him on his show. And he's like, yes, he did. He's like, uh, dude, you might be, you know, a, a, a funny, pasty little British man, but. Irish man. Irish man. I am Henry Cavill and yeah. I will crush you and also beat you in a game of Warhammer. Yeah. Come on, Graham Norton. And he got Tom Holland to what be like, thinking? I'll play. What are you thinking? Yeah. Yes, and now Tom Holland is in on it. What if Tom Holland is in? If he gets Tom Holland in on the series, uh, that my producer brain just went, "Oh my god, how much are we spending?" So uh, I'm down for it. I just don't want to see the budget for it. <laughs> it's you're not making the show. What do you care? 
Look, look, I think about it, though, because any money that's look, spent on, buddies, on above the line is, if, if is buddies, taking away from the underline of the thing. Look, Henry's going to say, Henry's going to say, I will forfeit my salary for this episode to pay for Tom Holland to be in this episode of the show. That's possible because he'd that's, still get his EP fee. Yeah, so, yeah. you get your. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's um, what I'm hyped about for 2023. Okay. It's, some, it's something to get hyped about. <laughs> it's a 45 minute conversation. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, you know who actually uh, is trying actively to get involved in the production of this and has been promoting it on uh, on social media? TV's Curtis Anderson. Oh no, dude! I oh. I can barely get hired by anybody right now. I'm not going to try and get in <laughs> on this show. Nobody knows me. But uh, come the on, creator man. of Astartes. Oh, uh uh-huh. Is actively trying to be like, guys, come on, get me connected. I'm ready. Get me in. And I think he would be a great addition to that creative team. I don't know exactly what he would do, but he's, he's a writer as much as we know him as a, uh, as much as we know him as, as a, as a, as a computer animator. Right. Um, he wrote the Astartes story. And I think one of the things that really came across in, uh, in Astartes in the first place was that it was a really solid story because space Marines are hard to write for. How do you write a post human super soldier and show that accurately? I don't know. I feel like Dolph Lundgren and uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. They were kind of prissy. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they got mad at each other and like got into a fight because one of them was jealous and how successful the other one was. You know what I mean? So we saw we saw what what Space Marines see now. Astar- now you know point point. That's how that's how hard it is to write. It is a hard. Soldier. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Um. But we saw what a Space Marine can really do. Yes. When 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 Astartes came out. And I and thought the ep- I thought the 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 film was really well directed as well. Yes, I don't know yeah. if this one guy did he make the he whole thing start to all, finish all of it. So he did the direction, the animation, the writing, the story, all of it. Put a please put a link in the doobly doo for this because I need everybody who's watching this. Who I mean, if for some somehow you You've have not Astartes. seen Astartes, but you're watching there, this. The version I'm going to link to is the one that's on Warhammer Plus that's available for everybody. There are people in the internet who are upset because Sa- I want to say Sawayama. I don't remember. I don't remember his name. I don't know how to pronounce it anyway, even if I remember. But the creator made fixes to the entirety of Astartes when hmm. Games Workshop came to him and, and said to do it. The internet blamed Games Workshop for the changes that were made. I think the changes were positive. And uh, as somebody who's who's watched both versions, I think the, the version on Warhammer Plus is the superior version. It's recolored. Some changes were made to some uh, layouts uh, that helped with the direction of the story flow. Uh, some of the colors were updated. Some of the rendering was updated. Like little things that not a lot of people will note got improved when they did this version of it. Mm-hmm. So that's the one I'm going to link to. But I don't want to hear any arguments in the <laughs> in the comments about, ooh, this isn't the original. The creator made these fixes for a reason, and they're good fixes. For example, the sergeant now has the proper... Uh, uh, markings on his armor in what would be the equivalent of episode one. Okay. As opposed to the original where it was just all the same, same markings on the same dudes. Cause he didn't have it all figured out yet. Uh, okay. The plasma bolt goes the right direction in the update, as opposed to the original where it went from right to left instead of left to right. Okay. So all he didn't, he say. didn't George Lucas it. I mean, he did, but it's for the best. Right. They're fixes as opposed to changes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean a lot of a lot of what 
Lucas did too were fixes, but then he also made a lot of changes. That Did weren't, weren't, <laughs> really shouldn't like the stormtrooper bathroom. Excellent. That's hysterical. Excellent. That is absolute. Yeah. That is a. I am on board with that change. I also really like amazing. all of but, the changes that were made in uh, Empire Strikes Back. No, no, not all of them. Luke screaming what? no as he falls down the. They took that out. The exhaust shaft. They For took Disney it out. Plus. Yes, but if but when if you we buy went the to DVD the theater. Now? Oh, well, when we man. went to the theater and we watched yeah. that, we stood in line for four hours at that time. Kids, that's what <laughs> before. All right. We are of a certain vintage. We used to have to wait in line for hours outside a movie theater to get in and then hope you that you don't get a seat right up in the front row. Honest to God, this but, is for TikTok because that's where the kids are. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the version we saw. Yeah. That was, Come on. the no was bad. Come on. That was, the no bad. was bad. That the was, no was bad. Bad. Whatever's currently playing on Disney that Plus, That changed though. the character. That changed the moment. No. No. So that's what we're hyped about. <laughs> Dan, it's been a good year. Yeah. It's been a good year. We've put together some things. We've done some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. I, I, at the beginning of the year, uh, I didn't have a YouTube channel. We started this no games for old men. I painted an orc commandos kill team and mm-hmm. played multiple games with them. And I now have a probably 50% done gray knights army on top of feel pretty good on top of everything else i mean that's that's pretty great we finished a D D campaign yeah start on a gerps campaign well we're in development on a gerps campaign yes oh did you did you shoot your episode zero already no 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 you're right. We're in development. Yeah, what do yeah. you t- what? I've done a little bit more work. Okay. Yeah. I don't trust you now. That's fair. But all in all, 2022 was a pretty good year. Yeah. Excited for 2023. Yes, me too. Yeah. Me too. I am excited to get these gray knights finished. I think I keep, I've got that photo that I put up at the beginning of the, up in the corner of my screen. I keep looking at it. I'm thinking they look all right. They, they, they do. They good. really do. They, they look really do. good. So yeah. yeah, once I get them done, I think I'll be happy with them. To all our folks out there, don't yep. forget to tell us what you were excited about in 2022. Tell us mm-hmm. about your favorite games, things you accomplished, all that good stuff. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, get everybody going. Uh, and if you like Mech Warrior, Monday is coming not soon enough. So you're going to be able to see another episode there. Don't forget to live chat with us at 9 a.m. Pacific time when those mm-hmm. Mech Warrior Mondays go live. Uh, we have a great time. I managed to kick myself out of the chat last Monday. I'm not going to make that mistake again this Monday. I thought you got butt hurt and bounced. No, <laughs> like, not at all. I, go? I had these amazing witticisms <laughs> that just were lost. Were lost because Nobody I decided to delete a comment. Nobody By saw the way, me. YouTube, how about how about not kicking somebody out because they retract a statement? I anyway, think it was user error. That's possible. I think that's it was fair. user error. Anyway, have a wonderful new year. We'll see you in 2023. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>